It's that magical time of year again. The leaves are changing, the air is crisp, Halloween is right around the corner. Yes, that's right, it's time to watch Hocus Pocus. I think it's safe to say that Hocus Pocus has officially joined the lexicon of beloved Halloween movies. Despite the strangely negative reviews this film received when it was released in theaters, which I blame partially on Disney's decision to release a Halloween movie in July, Hocus Pocus is pulled in record TV viewers every October. Among those of us who grew up watching this movie, the film has achieved cult status. For any sad souls out there who have not seen the film, here's a quick summary. The movie begins in 17th century Salem, where the three Sanderson sisters have just absorbed the life force of young Emily Binks. Her older brother, Thackeray, goes after the witches but gets turned into a cat for his troubles. Though the Sanderson sisters are caught and hanged, the eldest, Winifred, casts a spell ensuring that they will return if a virgin lights the black flame candle during a full moon. Left as a cat, Thackeray vows to guard the Sanderson sisters' house to prevent this from ever happening. Cut to present day Halloween. Max Dennison has just moved to Salem from LA and thinks the town's witch craze is just that, crazy. Even his crush on Allison, whose parents own the Sanderson cottage, doesn't change that. Since Max's parents are going to a party at Town Hall that night, they force him to take his little sister Danny trick-or-treating. Though Max is clearly pissed off about the whole thing, he cheers up once they run into Allison, and he convinces both girls to come with him to the Sanderson house. Of course, once there, Max ends up lighting the black flame candle and bringing the Sanderson sisters back to life. With the help of Thackeray Banks, who still guards the cottage, Max, Danny, and Allison manage to steal Winifred's spellbook and escape. Since the Sanderson sisters need the spellbook if they're going to survive after dawn, they give chase. Along the way, they resurrect Winifred's ex-lover, Billy, and cast a spell on all the adults of Salem, forcing them to dance until they die. Catching up with Max and the others, they recover the spellbook and have time to make enough potion to absorb the life force of one child. Cornered in the graveyard, Max grabs the potion and swallows it to save Danny's life. However, before the sisters can absorb his life force, the sun rises and they instantly turn to dust. The spell on the adults is broken, and Binks is finally able to join his sister in the afterlife. So what is it exactly that makes Hocus Pocus so great? Well, for one thing, it's a classic holiday story told in a unique way. Like your typical Christmas tale, Hocus Pocus centers on a non-believer, Max. Stupid cat! Okay, Max. You've had your fun. It's time to go. Come on, Allison. Max, she's right. Let's go. Oh, come on. It's just a bunch of hocus pocus. He's at the age where trick-or-treating and costumes aren't as cool as girls and being a 90s punk. Guess what? You're going to think you're trick-or-treating. Not this year, Danny. Mom said you have to. Well, she can take you. She and Dad are going to the party at Town Hall. Well, you're eight. Go by yourself. trick-or-treating remember it'll be like old times yeah well the old days are dead it doesn't matter what you say you're taking me wanna bet of course as the non-believer he's also the catalyst He's the one who lights the black flame candle and brings the Sanderson sisters back to life. Max, I'm not kidding this time. It's time to go. Max, no! Uh-oh.
virgin with the candle. By the end of the movie, he is not only converted to a believer in Halloween and spooky stuff in general, he is also a better person for it. Case in point, he sacrifices himself to save his little sister. Give me that file! Put her down or I'll smash it! I'll smash it and she dies! What? No! Now you have no choice! You have to take me. To round out the trope, we also have Danny, Max's little sister and a believer who no one takes seriously due to her age, Allison, Max's crush and the reason why he decides to go to the Sanderson house at all, and finally Binks, enchanted cat and overall representative of the supernatural. Basically, it's a miracle on 34th Street, but with witches, zombies, and curses. Don't believe me? Check out these parallels. The main character in Miracle on 34th Street is Doris Walker, a single mother who doesn't believe in Santa Claus and teaches her daughter not to believe either. Her daughter, Susan, starts to believe in Santa Claus, but isn't really taken seriously because of her age. Next door neighbor, Fred Gailey, a true believer and potential love interest, encourages both daughter and mother to keep their minds open. And finally, we have Chris Kringle, Mary representative of the supernatural, who ultimately convinces Susan and Doris to join in his cause. The end result? Both Susan and Doris are converted to full-on believers, and they are happier for it. So people love Hocus Pocus because it's telling the same heartwarming tale that they've been hearing for decades, but about the way cooler holiday. But that's not all. Hocus Pocus also appeals to multiple audiences by playing across several levels. The most immediate level is the kid one. Now the main character might be a 16 year old, but both he and the audience are connected to childhood via Danny, his eight year old sister. She is the voice of the child in this movie, and the film plays to her level with talking cats, slapstick humor, and a happy ending. That great beans, what took thee so long? I'm sorry, Emily. I had to wait 300 years for a virgin to light a candle. Adults are shown as clueless. This can't hear Binks, right? He can talk. My brother's a virgin. He lit the black flame candle. The witches are back from the dead and they're after us. We need help. How much candy have you had, honey? Mean older brothers learn to appreciate their kid sisters, and childhood beliefs are validated. That's a lot of child wish fulfillment for a movie that one critic deemed dismayingly grisly for a movie aimed at kids. Granted, the film gets a little dark at times. But this is Disney we are talking about. We are lucky that no one's mom gets shot by a hunter in the first five minutes. But this is also a film that young adults sit down and watch together, with or without kids around. And that's because Hocus Pocus isn't just kid haha -ha funny. It is also adult haha -ha funny, in a way that doesn't even try to be subtle. Take one of my favorite scenes. You lit the black flame candle. Yeah. Come on. Okay, let's get on the sidewalk. And he's a virgin. Virgin? Yeah. Really? Or the lecherous bus driver. Tell me, friend, what is this contraction? I call it a bus. 
of us. Of what? <laughs> and its purpose? To convey gorgeous creatures such as yourselves to your most forbidden desires. <laughs> well, that's it. We desire children. <laughs> hey, that may take me a couple of tries, but I don't think that'd be a problem. I'll point out. Marvelous! Thank you. <laughs> Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I need one of those instant ice packs. You girls are giving me a fever. Yow. Maybe the children watching get the jokes and maybe they don't, but they are still being entertained while the adults are laughing. So, basically, you have a not so traditional holiday movie aimed at the entire family and chock full of heartwarming lessons, adult humor, and a wallop of 90s nostalgia. And Bette Midler. Have I mentioned that the head Sanderson sister is played by Bette Midler, who sings I Put a Spell on You to a room full of Salem adults? I put a spell on you, and now you're gone. My granny fell on you, and it was strong. So strong, so strong, so strong. Your wretched little life have all been cursed because of all. And her youngest, stupidest sister is none other than Sarah Jessica Parker, who is not only the hot Sanderson sister, but also the one who lures away children with her singing. And what about Thora Birch? who has fallen off the cultural zeitgeist in recent years, but made a name for herself in the late 90s slash early 2000s as Jane Burnham in American Beauty and Enid in Ghost World. What about the fact that this is Bette Midler's favorite film? So do yourself a favor. Skip the Halloween parties this year, which are bound to be lame anyways, and watch Hocus Pocus. Not only is it on infinite repeat on ABC Family, but sure to put a spell on you. For that marvelous introduction, <laughs> I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. <laughs> you can't stop the things I do. I ain't lying. No! No! Oh, Don't look at them! Been 300 years. Right down to the day. Now the witch is back. And there's hell to pay. <laughs> I put a spell on you. Good joke. Happy Halloween. Thanks a lot. No, man, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get me. I'm not kidding. Oh, God.